Welcome to JASP Tutorials. Today I'll introduce traditional logistic regression. Logistic regression is used when there is a dichotomous response, meaning there are only two possible outcomes. Our example file contains the real data from the Titanic disaster. Each row in the data represents one of over 1,300 passengers on the Titanic. In the columns, we see the name of the person, his or her passenger class, and the person's age. Furthermore, we know the gender and whether or not the passenger survived. For this variable, a 1 indicates that the passenger survived, and 0 indicates they did not when the ship sank. In this tutorial, we'll build a logistic regression model to predict the survival of the passengers based on their age and passenger class. To do this, we drag our categorical outcome variable survival to the dependent field, the continuous variable age to covariates, and the categorical variable passenger to factor. We also select the option odds ratio, which makes the interpretation of the coefficients easier. Now we can interpret the estimates of the regression coefficients, the odds ratios. But we have to be careful. When we interpret the odds ratios for surviving the disaster, we have to keep in mind that the value 0 of the continuous variables and the first factor level of the categorical variables are serving as reference classes for the model. And the odds for this reference class are described in the intercept. In our case, we have age as a continuous variable and passenger class as a categorical variable. Thus, our reference class are newborn babies or passengers with age 0 who were traveling in first class. Their odds of survival were about 7.6 to 1, which means that their probability to survive was 7.6 times higher than their probability to drown. By investigating the estimated odds ratio for age, we see an odds ratio lower than 1, indicating that for passengers in the same class, the odds of survival are higher when age is lower. Similarly, for passengers of a given age, the odds of survival are also lower when traveling in the second and third class compared to the first class. For instance, the odds of survival for a Titanic passenger in third class is just one-tenth of that for one in first class. An extensive tutorial video on how to interpret log odds ratios in the logistic regression will be linked in the description. You can also change the reference class for your categorical variables. Go to the dataset by clicking OK and select the variable. The factor level, which is listed in the first position, constitutes the reference class. Usually, the reference class will be determined based on the alphabetical order of the factor level. We can now select a different factor level as our baseline. For example, third class. By moving the factor level to the top, we change the reference class. But for consistency, we'll continue the analysis with the first class as our reference. We can visualize the probability to survive with the conditional estimates plots. The plots are conditional in the sense that they display the probability to survive the disaster for all levels of age given the reference level of all other factors. This means that we now see how the estimated probability of survival changes with age for a passenger who traveled in first class. The gray shading around the line represents the 95% confidence intervals. The second plot displays for each passenger class separately the probability of survival for baby passengers, that is, newborns aged zero. JASP also includes useful tools to assess model performance, indicating how accurate your model can predict the outcome. These tools include the R-squared approximations in the model table and the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix indicates how well your model predicts the outcomes. In our case, whether someone survived based on their age and their class. In the diagonal, we can see the cases that were correctly predicted by the model. The off-diagonal entries display cases where the model predicted an incorrect outcome. By selecting the option proportions, we can see that about 65% of the data have been correctly predicted by the model. 
Two common metrics that follow from this are the sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity describes the proportion of true positives, the survival cases in which the model correctly predicts that a person did survive the disaster. Conversely, specificity refers to the proportion of the model correctly predicting that a person has drowned, also known as a true negative, which in our case is around 79%. JASP's logistic regression contains many more options, such as detailed diagnostics to check how well your model fits the data. One highlight is the easy check for over-dispersion of our model, which would indicate that the actual data show a greater variability than the model has predicted. In JASP, you can check for over-dispersion with the squared Pearson residuals plot. The expected value of the squared residuals is 1. These residuals are fairly sparse, so it's hard to tell just from looking whether the expected value is close to 1 or not. To better see if our model conforms to this expectation, we run a smoother through the residuals, essentially a moving average, shown by the red line. If the red line lies mostly near 1, we can conclude that our model does not suffer from much overdispersion. Some deviation around the tails is to be expected. These were the main features of the traditional logistic regression in JASP. The .jasp file for this tutorial video can be found in our OSF folder, which is linked in the description below. For more in-depth tutorials, you can subscribe to the JASP YouTube channel or follow the link in the description to go to our website. Thanks for watching.